I am going to present in this video a vision of a deer, worried about a forthcoming product created in the sea environment. Please pray and seek Lord Wisdom on this message. Hello Spirit Revive family. Linda here is my name. God has sent me a message regarding something perilous that is scheduled against Christians, especially those who have not encountered the Holy Spirit. God showed this to me as it is about to happen all throughout the world and we need to be quite careful to avoid falling into this trap. I knelt down to pray before bed on August 20th, 2024 night. The walls of my chamber flashed as soon as I began to pray. Having only started to pray a few seconds before, I was not asleep. The light grew even more brilliant, and I soon lost awareness of my location. I suddenly discovered myself in what resembled a jungle. I became nervous as though someone or something were observing me. Though I understood I was alone, the anxiety persisted. I so made the decision to search for anything by strolling among the woods. Walking, I observed something peculiar. There were no leaves moving, no sounds of birds, and even the breeze vanished. The air was silent. I got quite afraid when the trees started to slink toward me. I felt as though I had stumbled into an area I shouldn't have been there. I asked the Lord to send me away in a prayer. But the further I traveled, the more odd things around me seemed. Around my feet a soft mist started to rise, and I sensed a force inside me urging me on. Eventually arrived in a clearing. A big oak tree stood in the middle, and close it on a pedestal gleamed a small bottle. I found myself pulled to it. Still, I then heard the Lord speaking. Not to get any closer, he advised me I halted and the voice once more issued a warning. Suddenly the earth under me changed, and I discovered it was no more solid but rather dark water. On the pedestal, unaltered, the brilliant bottle stayed. Then the Lord showed me something quite startling. He informed me the bottle carried a unique scent. However, this scent was not from our world. After that, I was shown the aquatic kingdom, a region right in the spirit domain. Made there, the perfume was now being marketed in a sizable market underground. Strange and terrible things we do not find in the physical world abound in this market. Around the perfume bottle, I observed several very influential people congregate. Though I wasn't sure whether it was indeed them, some of them resembled. Well-known people like Barack Obama and Dr. Tedros. The Lord informed me this scent had a certain use. It was developed to regulate women's as well as men's hearts. More than just a nice scent, this perfume does when it comes into touch with someone's skin. It touches their soul and causes them to lose interest in God's creations. Designed to undermine the faith of those who wear it, the perfume is a spiritual weapon. Vision of the perfume bottle opening revealed dense mist rapidly spreading out. This mist served as a sort of spiritual narcotics. It progressively undermined believers' spiritual defenses, therefore lessening their awareness. Those who wore this scent were unaware that by doing so, they let evil powers to seize their souls. These terrible powers functioned silently rather than assuming a dramatic takeover. Every time the perfume was worn, these dark powers acquired more influence over the person's mind, heart, and behavior. The scent interfered with their ability to hear God's word and distinguish right from wrong. This scent went beyond just merchandise. It was a means of people becoming possessed without awareness. It left them helpless against evil and offered them a false sense of safety as it gently destroyed their souls. Its actual objectives were to fool people, rule them, and gradually erode their faith little by bit. This was a call to action, not only a warning I realized at then. We have to keep firm in our faith and exercise great caution not to become spiritually sidetracked. Darkness is continually trying to lure us away from God in the modern society. Every day we have to decide whether we would yield to temptation or hang upon our religion. We have to decide to remain loyal and understand the risk of even little influences that seem benign. We have to be cautious as our spiritual life is under threat. We equip ourselves for the conflicts ahead by clinging to our faith, fighting temptation, and avoiding dishonesty. We have to be ready as fighters of faith as this is a serious struggle. I appreciate you publishing this insightful revelation, Linda Joy. For Christians to remain attentive and vigilant in these spiritually demanding times, your message is absolutely vital. The picture of the shining bottle and the mist from the sea realm reminds us of how subtle but terrible the enemy plans may be. 
The danger of spiritual numbness and possession you have mentioned emphasizes the need of keeping strong in our faith and spotting the concealed risks all around us. Your story asks all believers to pray more deliberately, seeking God's protection and direction against spiritual traps. We must listen to God's counsel and avoid things that can seem benign, but have the power to sour our spirits, much as you were advised not to approach the brilliant bottle. We ought to put on God's whole armor as the fight against dishonesty is actual. And Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 will help one to firmly oppose the plans of the enemy. Your disclosure can motivate others to review their life, turn their attention back on God, and guard the influences they let into their hearts. Let us be alert as we follow Christ, aware that the enemy operates in secret. But God's truth always reveals the darkness. I appreciate you viewing right through to the end. Forwarding this message to all of your family, friends, and loved ones will help us distribute it to the rest of the globe. If not already, kindly register on my channel. Kindly do this immediately to enable you to get other films on God's Word in the next days and weeks. Thank you. May God bless you till our next gathering from all of us at Spirit Revive. Till we get back together, stay safe. To viewers, dear, I wanted to pause and really thank you to every single one of you that view and interact with our videos. To us, your support and encouragement is really vital. Our goal in starting Spirit Revived was to provide a forum where people may gather to share their stories and find comfort in their religion. Your energy and involvement have beyond our expectations and make us happy to see the difference your ambitions and visions have made in your life. To those who connected with the dream, I want to remind you that hope always exists even in the most horrible of situations. Constant and ready to lead us through even the worst of nightmares are God's love and pity. Let us hang to our faith, help one other, and be a lighthouse of hope under trying circumstances. I also wish to invite any believer who has had their own dreams, visions, near-death experiences, or strong testimonial. Spirit Revived is about providing a forum for you to share your experiences as well as about sharing ours. Your tales can inspire and uplifting others, therefore strengthening their faith and reminding them of God's amazing presence in our life. We would be glad to hear from you whether your dream, vision, near-death experience, or story calls for sharing. For someone in need, your gift could be a lighthouse of hope reminding them they are not traveling their spiritual road alone. Once more, I want to thank you for your constant support and for being so vital for Spirit Revived. Let us keep searching God's truth together, exchanging our stories and creating a community anchored in love and faith. May God bless each 